Hi everyone and welcome back for another episode in the Equipment System Tutorial Series. In this episode we are going to carry on creating our character sheet window. So in the last episode we worked out how to do the 3D uh, model render onto the screen. Uh, what we're going to do now is make it so we can change this mesh to whatever we like um, and start building that character sheet window. So let's go into our 3D mesh capture BP. Okay, so the skeletal mesh that we've got currently in place, we can drag that up to the mesh placeholder and attach this spring arm to the skeletal mesh as well. Um, we can actually get rid of the mesh placeholder if we want by if we just drag the skeletal mesh actually onto the default scene root and delete the mesh placeholder. We don't actually need it anymore because we've got the skeletal mesh instead. So you've got skeletal mesh and then a child of that is a spring arm and a child of that is a scene capture component 2D. So the skeletal mesh, what we're going to do is we can either leave it as it is or remove it and make it blank. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to remove it. Okay, so it's got none. So we can actually test whether or not this works. So if I click play, nothing will appear because there's no mesh on that blueprint. So if I go back to my mesh uh, blueprint, um, what we're going to do is go to our event graph. And in the event graph, we're going to have a couple of things here. We're going to have a source mesh. And the source mesh is going to be the actor. Actually, let's just change the source actor. Source actor. And we're going to change that to an actor type. Actor object reference. And the source actor is going to be what we use to refer to when we update our window. So the source actor is going to come through as a uh, instance editable and expose on spawn. So when we have this object in the world, we can edit this actor variable. Okay. Um, after that, we're going to create a custom event. So type in custom event. And I'm going to name it update mesh. So to update the mesh, we're going to basically look at the source actor, look at what its mesh is, and then uh, set the skeletal mesh to be the same. So to update the mesh, we're going to grab the source actor and choose get. And in this case, what we're going to do is cast to third person character. Now, if you've got enemies, or such as like, um, well, anything really, anything in the world, what you ideally would have is a um, a, uh, a a parent class that you can refer to instead. But for this, I'm just going to use a third person character because we're dealing with a player, and chances are we're looking at other players too who will use the same class. So as the third person character, we can now access its mesh. So I choose get mesh. With that done, we can then drag the skeletal mesh component out. And then from that, we can set skeletal mesh. And that sets the skeletal mesh settings on the skeletal mesh. So this thing here, it will set this. So connect that up to the cast. And the new mesh you want to set to will be the same as this mesh here. Um, why is that not? Oh yeah, sorry. Set skeletal mesh. Uh, the mesh itself will get the component. For this we need to actually get the mesh. So get skeletal mesh. There we go. There we go. That's it. So, a bit long-winded, but let's, let's look through this. So, we have the source actor. It's cast a third-person character. We get the target's mesh. We get the skeletal mesh settings of that mesh. This, And then we set the skeletal mesh of this actor to be the same. Okay. So, click compile. And to make update mesh work, on begin play, I'm going to call update mesh. Okay, so all that's left is to set the source actor. 
So the source actor, I'm going to click on 3D Mesh Capture, and you'll see source actor as one of the default um, editable variables. And there you'll see an actor, pick actor from scene, eyedropper. If I click on that, then click on the player character, you will see the source actor now turns to third person character. And if I click play, it now appears in window. If I was to click on the third 3D mesh capture again and choose pick actor from scene, and if I choose, uh, if I were to choose something else, such as this box, this cube here, it won't show because it is not a third person character. If I had enemies in here, we could choose those as long as they were using the same third person character um, actor. Uh, uh, yeah, actor. Okay, so we got the character displayed on screen. Um, let me just choose our character so we can actually test this out. There we go. Uh, now we're going to work on getting our character window onto the game. So in my UI folder, I had a character sheet and a heads up display. Open up your character sheet. Okay, so in our character sheet window, we set up the image uh, just to display. Okay. For this, I'm now going to delete this, start again from scratch, and I'm going to drag in a size box. So drag a size box onto the hierarchy, and this can be the actual window itself. So I'm going to choose a width override and height override, and I'm going to make it a width of 700 and a height of 900. Okay, and there's my window. So before you really do this, you should have it designed on paper beforehand or in Photoshop so you know what you're looking at and what kind of how you could break it up into different panels. Um, so for my one, I'm going to keep it quite simple. So here I'm going to put in a vertical box into my size box. Oh, actually, let's put some background onto it. So let's delete the vertical box and put a border. And I'm going to choose a color, brush color here. I'm going to choose a dark grey. Then I'm going to choose a vertical box. So vertical box onto the border. And the vertical box itself is going to stack its contents vertically. So I've put in multiple widgets, they'll uh, components, they'll stack vertically. So on the vertical box, I'm going to drag in a horizontal box, a another horizontal box, and a third horizontal box. The first one is going to be the title bar, so I'm going to name it at the top here, uh, title bar. Middle one is going to be main window. And the bottom one is going to be stats. So that will contain all the player stats. So the stats window, I'm going to put in a size box. So the size box, put in the stats. In the size box here, I'm going to change the height override to be, uh, let's see what 200 looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So with 200, I'm then going to click uh, fill. And that size box will then fill the whole width of the window. So if I change the width of the window after the fact, the size box will follow suit too. The title bar is now also going to have a size box. So drag size box into the title bar. And this one's going to have another height override and this time I'm going to give it uh, 50 and again fill and it fills the whole entire screen then for main window rather than give it a size box and a, 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 a determined height I'm just going to go and click fill and that will fill up the rest of the remaining space so hopefully you can see the clear different areas here the next bit is I'm going to put a text component into my title bars size box and I'm going to click on it and type in the name character sheet and there I can justify it to the center and it will put it into the center of the window next I'm going to do is the main window so the main window 
is going to have three parts to it. It's going to have armor slots down the left, the main image widget that we've worked on prior to this in the middle, and on the right it's going to have weapon slots. So that is going to be a horizontal, uh, a horizontal bar, but the armor slots are going to be vertical. So the main window, even though it's horizontal, will need a vertical bar inside of it. I feel like I'm confusing things by talking about them a lot more. Bear with me, it will make sense hopefully in, in, in time. So the vertical box goes in like so. Then I want uh, uh, an image. And then another vertical box. These vertical boxes will then also take a size box. So if I go in here and choose size box. And drag one into each of them. And the size boxes for these will have a width override of let's do uh, 120 again 120 here and we'll click fill for both of these like so so now you can see the width they're going to take up the image we then click on the image and click fill and that fill the available space and I can change the image to back to what we had so I'm going to go render mesh now what do I call it mesh render yeah mesh render target material okay so let's click compile and see how that looks so there's your character sheet you see it's a different shape um, that's because we haven't changed it yet on the HUD um, but you can see the image doesn't actually fill up the whole entire space to make it more clear let's get the character sheet the right size so heads up display on the character sheet here we're going to click size to content click compile and then close it back down now you can see how the image itself is stretching to fill that space which is not what we want we wanted the image to look nice and perfect so how do we get around that how do we make a square texture because we can't change the size of the texture they come square how do we change that to fill a uh, rectangular space well into the character sheet we go and click on the image so what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called a scale box if we right click on the image one and go wrap with and see scale box it'll put a scale box in its place and put the image inside the scale box what a scale box does if you hover over it it'll tell you basically it allows you to place the content with a desired size and have the scale of it to meet the constraints placed on that box so the scale box will have some constraints and the contents of it will scale to meet those constraints so if i go to the scale box here and change the stretch of it to from a scale to fit to scale to fit uh y stretch direction i can leave it both but i'm going to go down only and click compile and I think that's the settings and I think that does, does it oh not down only so you want both oops there we go and now you can see the character mesh now isn't stretched anymore and it's perfectly in proportion as we want it so other things to do to dress this up well the image can have a background image behind it um, we can overlay this with a, a border so let's do the overlay uh, idea so with the overlay drag that in between the image and the scale box oh no we can't do that let's delete that right click on the image and wrap with overlay and in there we're going to drag a border onto the overlay border then can be set to fill the whole thing and I can change the brush color here to a much darker color, like so. Click compile and click play. Oh, and you can see the border is now actually covering up our mesh. Easy fix. Just switch the order. Image one and border have. And there we go. So we've got a character sheet slowly coming together. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a text field into my stats window here. So 
let's minimize some of these things and go into our stats box now okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to create the si uh, stats box to have a background color and put some text in it to begin with so the stats box is got currently got a size box in it so we're going to get rid of the size box we don't need it at the moment don't worry about it dropping down um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to wrap the stats box in a size box so on the stats right click wrap with size box and the size box we can then change the height to be what we wanted which is 200 so now we've got the stats box which is horizontal now we want it horizontal because I want two columns of text so drag text one in there text two in there and the first column click fill and the second column click fill and because they're both set to fill they'll take up the space evenly I'm going to change the font size of each of these down to 14 and this one to 14 too and I'm also going to get add a background color to it as well so right click on this stats horizontal box wrap with border and border color so click on brush color and I'm gonna make it the same color as my character window so you do that by using the little eyedropper tool Click OK and compile if I play this I'm gonna keep playing and checking make things uh, make sure things look all right uh, I'm not too happy with that border I think um, that bottom stats box I think it looks a bit too cramped uh, with close to the border so if you click on the size box we can then see padding is zero change it to five and you'll start getting some padding between it and the edge so that's five let's try ten there you go click compile let's see how that looks that looks a bit better okay now all of this could be handled differently with an image so if you want to design your own background rather than use a border as a color you can change the border setting to use an image instead by simply clicking on the border and going to the brush and choose an image instead i haven't got an image i'm just going to do basic colors okie dokie so the next job is to get the text to display here so to do that i'm going to first of all set some stats up onto the player character so let's go into our player character so go to third person bp blueprints third person character and let's set up some stats on that character here so the first one i'm going to do is health and that's going to be an integer the next one is going to be mana and again that's going to be an integer after that you want to add another one and this one is going to start displaying the strength stat and that's going to be a float another one for stamina another one for agility and finally another one for intellect and these are all going to be stats if you want to keep your variables organized i recommend categorizing them so with the health click on the category up here and type in stats it's just an organizational thing it doesn't really change anything um, it just makes it a lot easier to find what you want so choose from the drop down stats for each one like so click compile and we can give these some default values so health I'm going to give it 1000 mana I'm going to give 500 strength I'm going to give 14 you can put in any values you like it doesn't really matter 50 for stamina agility 7 and intellect uh, 5 okay click compile and now our character's got some stats back onto your character sheet we now need to plug it so these stats appear in these text blocks so click on text block 1 and click on bind next to text and click create binding so this binding is going to get the values from our player character so to do that we're first of all going to get the player character on the event graph what I want you to do is I want you on the event construct I want you to get the player character and then 
cast that to the third person character. So this will allow us to access those stats we just have uh, put in. So as a third person character, we want to store this as a reference by promoting it to a variable and naming it uh, player character. Click compile and you go back to get text zero. We can now drag player character out and choose get. And then from there, I can get the health. I can get the strength and I can also get the stamina. Okay. So how do we actually display this? So on return value, drag this out and go format text. And with formatting text, it's a really neat way of getting variables into a text field. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in the word health, colon, and if I put in curly brackets, HP, and hit enter, you see HP now becomes a field I can hook up. That means it will substitute this value into where those semicolons, are, uh, those curly brackets are. So now to do another line, go back to your text field here and do shift enter and you'll get a new line. So in here, I'm gonna do strength, curly brackets, str, curly brackets. And again, shift enter. Oh. Stamina. STA. Enter. And we can hook these up. Like so. Click compile. And go back to your designer. And choose the next text block. Bind. Create binding. Again, get the player character. Get mana. Get intellect and get agility from the return value format text and in here we can type in what we want so manner colon and curly brackets the curly brackets are super important you must have them shift enter intellect int and finally, agility. And then you just hook the pins up to their relevant slots. Click compile. And now, if we click play, you can see the stats are now appearing in our character window. Huzzah! And that's how that works. And that'll do for this episode. In the next episode, we'll start looking at equipment and how we can make the slots on the character sheet appear and uh, we'll get the equipment going into there as soon as possible. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to me uh, on Patreon and on here. On Patreon, you can get a, a video nice and early by two weeks, including the next part of this tutorial as, many, as well as many other videos. Thank you very much for watching and please give us a like and if you have any questions or comments please leave a comment below uh, the video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.